Hi there, Joanna Donnelly here from Met Air, and you might see me after the news at six o'clock presenting the general weather forecast. But you don't see my colleague, Harm Lex, and that's because he's an aviation forecaster. That's right, Joanna. Hey, Harm. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Great. You all right? Yeah. You're going to tell me a little bit about aviation forecast. Now, I know a little bit, but we want to tell everybody else a little bit about aviation forecasting. I make a general picture. I talk about today, tonight, tomorrow, and a little bit of an outlook. I'm very vague, you know, it might rain a little bit in Cork, but not Dublin. And that's about as specific as I get. And though, although we do the same work, it's very different in aviation. It's different, Joanna, yeah. We do specific forecasts for airports and for the Irish aviation sky. So that means you have several products. The first one is I call TAPS. TAPS are the forecasts for the airports. Terminal Aerodrome Forecast. That's what I chose for. That's what I, don't know, I keep getting that wrong. Yep. Yep. And then we make a chart for the whole, uh, the whole country and the airspace of both Ireland, which is called the Significant Weather Chart, which tells you all the weather systems that are present and forecast. Yeah, you said something very specific there. You said the significant weather. Because that's the thing, isn't it? Uh, for me, the, it's general weather. It's um, sunny spells and scattered showers. But that's not significant if you're a sunny, flying. A sunny spell is not significant when you're flying. Yeah, yeah. so that's very cool. You're, you're only interested in significant. So what's significant to the aviation industry? Yeah, that's a good question. That would be like, um, for instance, a, a lot of cloud would be significant. Low cloud near the surface would be significant. Because when you're flying in the cloud, you can't see anything, just that cloud next to you, and that might be dangerous. The same is for fog, fog on the, on the ground. That could be dangerous as well because you, when you're landing, you don't see the end of the runway, perhaps. And the other thing is the wind. If the wind is very strong and it's coming from the side from an airplane, it might push an airplane off the runway in an extreme situation. Yeah. And that might be dangerous. So these are the things that we're interested in. Very good. Yeah. So your day lines up pretty much routine-wise. You go in, you, you, you create the, the forecast using the... You're 24 7 like me. 24 7, yeah. same, yeah. yeah. And um, we, we look at the same things as, as you do. We look yeah. at the observations, we look at the satellites, we look at the radar, and we look at the computer models, yeah. see what we're going to expect for the next 24 hours or so. And with that, we make a forecast. But the other thing is, we have to continually uh, look at the forecast and um, make sure that everything is still in line. Because if, if things deteriorate or get worse in an airport, we have to change our forecast. So that the people it's know. very much now casting, isn't it? You're, you're, yes. you're forecasting to the minute, as opposed to um, on a, a, a today, tonight, tomorrow, this evening. You're in the the realm of hours. The next few hours are important. Planes are landing and taking off all the time, and they need to know what they're going to expect. And there are so many rules. There are so many rules because there's a difference if the visibility is, let's say, five hundred meters on airport, or if it's three thousand meters, or ten kilometers. That makes a big difference for airplanes and has a huge impact on the overall aviation. Yeah, um, the thing I found interesting about aviation forecasting, it was, it's like doing meteorology 101, you know, you're, you're really getting into the tepigrams, the, the upper air ascents, um, that you don't do quite as well or quite as much in general forecasting. So you're, you're really reading off the, the more specific charts to the local spots. That's right, because the language we use, we use exact numbers, so it's quite exact. Although we have, we can't ever know how precise weather is going to be, what the exact details are. We try our best to give as much detail as possible, and probably more than in the general forecast, because it's, it's, it's important for the safety of the airport. Yeah. That's it. I do like aviation forecasting. Um, I do find it a little bit more strenuous, but maybe you get used to it as, as time goes on. You get used to it because one of the important things in aviation forecasting is experience. Experience helps you a lot with what you can expect in certain weather situations. And if you have a lot of experience, you're more confident in what, what's going to happen. What's your favourite weather, huh? I was going to say thunderstorms, but that's your favourite weather. And um, I won't say snow because Dublin Airport doesn't like snow. Okay. And the sunshine, I like sunshine, but sunshine is not real weather. No, it's a bit boring. Um, we're doing this interview from my our home because we are related. And out the corner of my eye, I spot the um, photographs we took when we went to Weather Nerds that we are, um, mm. Death Valley. Oh, yeah. 
we were both weather nerds and we were both headed off to Death Valley expecting to be in the um, heat, the, the hottest part of the world. And we went in prepared to be in the hottest part of the world. And to our extreme delight, we ran into a storm. Thunderstorms. Yeah. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was Dry thunderstorms, no rain. I do like thunderstorms. Yeah, we both do. Yes. Thanks for talking to us, Hannah. You're welcome.